Well, it took uh, it, it took uh, a lot of work to to do. Um. Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can apply a digital de-aging effect to your footage, or even the opposite, meaning that you can make your subject look either younger or older, just with a little help from AI. You will only need an editing software and two other tools that are very easy to use and absolutely free to download. So let's jump into it. Everybody's gonna appreciate it, it's a good thing. Now first thing you're gonna need is to download a piece of software called EBSynth, which was built essentially to bring paintings to life, but we will be using it a little bit differently here. Uh, the second tool you will need is the all famous mobile app, Face App. So I will leave both download links in the description below. So to get started, Import your footage to your editing software of choice. I'm going with uh, Adobe After Effects here. Trim your clip down to your preferred section and set the start frame or time code to zero. Now render the composition or the clip to a PNG sequence in a new folder that you can call video. This way you will have each of your video frames exported to a single PNG image. Now no need to panic, we're not gonna be doing any tedious frame by frame editing here. We will only need to select one single frame on which we will do most of the work. So what you need to do is to look for a single frame that displays most of the face details. I've tried this multiple times and noticed that Choosing a frame that shows eyes open and teeth gives us much better result. In my case, I like this one right here, frame 103. Once you're done picking the right frame, you will need to copy it over to your smartphone and import it to face app. Apply an age filter, and as I said earlier, you can go with young or old according to what you need. Once you apply the filter and export the image, place it in a new folder that you can call keys. Now make sure to give the file the same name as the original. So for me, the original image was frame 103. So the filtered image should be given the same name. Now open EBSynth. For keyframes right here, just select the newly created image from the keys folder. For video, select the first frame in the video folder and you can leave the mask option set as off as well as the remaining default settings. Now here for the first stop field, just enter 0 which refers to the number of our first frame. The keyframe field here refers to the edited image that's gonna be used as a reference which in our case is frame 103. And in the second stop box, you need to type in the number of the last frame in your sequence. So in my case, this is frame 168. So now what this means is that EBSynth will use frame 103, which as you remember, we applied the de-aging effect on, and it's going to copy the same effect and apply it on the rest of the frames within this range. So from 0 to 103 and from 103 to 168. Now in other cases, you might want to add more frame ranges, but this is not applicable here since we're only using one frame as a reference. So adding more ranges would be relevant in other scenarios, such as, for example, transforming a live action footage to a digital looking animation. Anyways, now let's select an output folder. And you can hit synth. At this point, EBSynth will just take a few minutes to generate new frames straight into your output folder. And as you can see, it applied the same effect used on our edited frame 103 on the rest of the frames. Now once the process is over, head back to your editing software, choose import file and browse to the output folder. Now select the very first frame and make sure to enable PNG sequence. If you are using After Effects like me, you can simply drop the sequence on this little icon here and this is gonna generate a new composition for you. I personally think the outcome is very impressive 
considering that we could achieve this without the help of any advanced de-aging technology and without using any complicated software or gadgets. Now the only drawback is that you will start to see some weird things happening if your subject is not looking straight at the camera. However, this by itself is really amazing and we can definitely expect to see a lot of improvement when new tools and software start to come along. Anyways, that was it for this video. I hope you find it interesting enough to try it out yourself. If that's the case, don't forget to give this video a like and if you're interested in seeing more tutorials like this one, make sure to subscribe and stick around. See you in the next one. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you.